today's video, we're making production style hitters. This is a great little product. These take about 10 minutes a piece from start to finish. Great little proto item. Pretty simple. Just a little spun up mouthpiece. A little clear magno dot, but if you can see in there, it magnifies the lines. Pretty cool. Also keeps it from rolling off the table. But that's what we're making today. We're making it out of some new Colorado Color Company Halloween themed tubing. This should be available on the site by the time this video comes out. This year we added a little purple to the mix. So pretty cool little pattern. Super easy to work, nice and even. So that's what we're working with. Some tools you're going to need. Bench roller and some jacks. So all these bowls are made from the tip of these jacks and they form just a nice little tapered bowl in there. So these are pretty crucial to this process and the way we do it. Another little thing here, this is a jack stand. I made a couple of these, they're floating around the shop, kind of in the R&D stage, but this is somewhere just to put your jacks when they're not in use to keep them clean. You know, they'll pick up dirt and glass on the bench. Also, like, you know, wax gets everywhere. So after you dress your jacks, you just hang them up there and the wax falls back into your container. Leave a comment if it's something you're interested in. We were going to make a small batch of these and see if it was something other people like. You know, it's pretty crucial in the way I work now. I found it on my bench, so every time I'm done with my jacks, they go right there. Nice, clean, ready to use next time. Alright, well I think that covers it, so let's start the video. Hello, and welcome back to the Colorado Color Company YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be making the 10 minute hitter. So first things first. I'm just going to flare some handles here. This is 12-7. And I'm going to use the jacks in combination with the bench roller just to prep some handles to attach to my piece of vac stack tubing that I have heating up in the kiln at 1,050 degrees. So here you can see I'm just heating the tip sticking the jacks in there closed and giving it some spins and flaring it right out. So here's the piece of tubing that we're working with. Like I mentioned before, it's that new Colorado Color Company Halloween pattern for 2023. This was just a little odd with a broken end that came through for testing, so I decided to make a video out of it. This pattern turned out to be super easy to work, super friendly, and I think it'll be a good addition to the Halloween line we have going on. <coughs> so here I'm just heating the piece of tubing just a little more than the handle. Obviously the 12.7 is thinner. That thick wall weight of the back stack is going to obviously take a little more heat to get flowing, but once they're both flowing, just stick them together. And here I'm just adding a little more heat into the vac stack, trying to give, a, give it a little tug, make sure that seal is good. And then we take it down to the bench roller to straighten it. So once I release it out of the claw grabbers, I'm just kind of using gravity here and stopping in the high spots. And we'll stick a little graphite on there just to make sure it's super nice and straight. So next, I'm going to cut that little broken end off with some cup shears. These are Jim Moore cup shears. More designed for soft glass, but they work great for Boro too. I believe these are the smallest size cup shears that Jim Moore makes. And we're just going to chop that broken section off. So we have a nice flat wall. I always like to pick those up off the bench. They will cut you. <laughs> and 
and then you know from the shears you get a little rough spot so I'm gonna go in and wipe that cut mark off just so I get a better seal onto my next 12 7 handle and I used to think you know wiping would take forever you know someone once told me oh just wipe it off just wipe it off and when I first started it took me a really long time to wipe that off but once you get proficient you know it only takes a second and it's good practice to have nice clean welds so here again I'm just building more heat into the back stack sticking that flared 12-7 handle right up in there and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to stretch the vac stack tubing down to about 12.7 on each end. This is going to reduce the waste a little bit so you don't have a big old fat knuckle here. If I didn't stretch that, you know, you'd have a bigger taper and it would be hard to deal with when you go to maybe reuse the knuckles. I do cut the knuckles off in this video. They are good. You can make slides carb caps and other small items out of them so maybe the next video I'll take the knuckles I set aside and make some smaller products out of it so there's no waste you know you want to utilize all this material and here I'm just heating the other side and I'm going to stretch it down this one doesn't go quite as well I, I stretch out my 12.7 just a little bit while I'm doing this but yeah you can see it's a little off there no biggie you know you're gonna get some knuckles here and there it's just part of it but you can see how I've kind of pulled my 12.7 handle off of a little bit too so I think I'm gonna go back in there and I'm gonna get that hot mash that 12.7 handle back onto the knuckle give it a couple puffs and just make sure you know it's a nice solid seal and nothing's gonna happen down the line while I'm working so there I kind of mash the clear back down probably giving it a little puff off camera and you can see there I have a little more clear in my seal and now I'm just trying to get it straightened back out and you can see there it looks looks pretty good. So now the stretch. So I kicked up on the foot pedal into the <clears throat> outer fire on the Mirage. Got it pretty ripping in a nice neutral flame. And you can see I'm kind of angling the glass there and you can see how the flame is shooting up and heating what I've already heated. And this is just a game of getting everything as hot as you can without overheating it. You know, you can overheat back stacks, especially if there's a soft portion of the pattern will get hotter than a stiffer portion and be more pliable sooner luckily this pattern is super even and easy to work so you know I can see I'm taking it from that orange glow right to that super hot almost yellow glow I'm gonna jump down into the links add some heat where it's needed and then as I start pulling this apart I can see where it needs more heat And ideally you're gonna get this hot in one shot and have one nice stretch here. I didn't quite hit it, so I'm going back and adding just a little heat where I need it. This does work better on a Herbie, I would say. The GTTs have so much thrust that it kind of pinpoints where the Herbie's so engulfing, you can go kind of rebuild in a little heat base gently, but there it is there. The stretch pulled down you can see I got a little knuckle little knuckles on each side but you know there's about a foot of straight tubing in there which I'm gonna break these hitters down into about three and a half sec three and a half inch sections so there I just pulled a little separation and I throw it in the infinity cutting wheel and we're just gonna do a little wiggle snap here 
but I'll be able to take the straight portion of this line tubing out of the middle and make three blanks for the three hitters that I make in this video. Here I'm just using an octagonal reamer to open up the hole. And now I've jumped down to 9.5. These hitters are pretty delicate, so I like to jump down to a smaller handle size. Here I'm just getting everything real hot. A little puff of air round out the inside and a little tug to stretch it. And you can see there, that'll be the mouthpiece when I go to finish the product. So here you can see she's got a little wobble in it, but I'm only using the first three and a half inches of this tube, which seems to be pretty straight, so that'll do. So here I'm using my Marver. I know my Marver's three inches, so I'm using my Marver as a guide to, you know, break down about three and a half inch sections. So here I've just jumped you know, a Marver length and a half inch over. I'm down in the needle flame that the GTT produces. And then I just pull that little hourglass shape, roll it in the infinity wheel, and wait for it to set up a little bit. And then give it a little snap. Ah, there she goes, there's one blank. And then I'm just gonna repeat this three times. <clears throat> that little hourglass shape kind of starts the taper of the mouthpiece there and gives me a hole about nine five to come in and just stick to. And then again, just a little puff of air to round out the inside, take it down to the bench roller and straighten it out. And again, you can see that three and a half inches I'm gonna take is going to be nice and straight. Again, just getting a little reference on the Marver. Readjusting my torch. Oh, you can see I got a blown out candle down there. It's been there for a long time. It doesn't ever bother me, but you know, you could potentially send this torch back to GTT and get that fixed. Yeah, just repeating the, the cutting tool step into the wiggle snap. And timing's crucial here. As soon as it's, you know, as soon as it's set up the right amount, you can just break that score. And this one's got just a little taper where there was a little bitty knuckle. So I'm gonna attach to this and just Draw the thicker side down to about 12.7, just so I'm not trying to fight it later when I'm actually doing the shaping of the hitter. Yep. Yeah, you can see there it's got that little bump on the left hand side, which I'm working from the hot side here where I did that seal and I'm pushing that heat base over as to not crack the thick part just in case that cooled enough to be a problem. Jumping into the Mirage flame. And I'm just gonna draw this little knuckle out to the diameter that I need for the product, which is about 12.7. And I can use that handle in my left hand is reference, that is 12.7. And it's a little longer than I needed, so I'm gonna take what I need and cut off a tiny little knuckle here. So there is the third one. Bam, with a tiny little knuckle, that piece would make a great little martini slide or something. Always save that stuff so you can use it later. And here are the three blanks for this video. So I have those heating up in the kiln at 1050, so they're nice 
and hot and ready to work on when they come out. So the first step is just to make sure these are nice and straight. And I'm just using the bench roller and going in the hole like that wasn't the best idea and it didn't work. So here's a better technique. You use underneath touching the wall that you want straight. That hole was, you know, a little oblong from the wiggle snap and it was kind of dictating a wobble into the hitter blank. So the solution was just to use the outside wall to straighten it. Watching myself work like this, I find all kinds of stuff that you know, in the moment you're doing that's kind of weird, but I learned from myself right there that when you're straightening something, maybe the outside wall is the best place to do it. So here we got the hitter blank <clears throat> between two nine five handles, nice and straight. And we're gonna come down and we're gonna spin up and blow out the mouthpiece here using a nice little tight focused GTT flame. Punch that heat in there, get the whole thing spun up and collapsing, and then blow it round. And here we go, we're just adding a little air to round that wall weight out. This move can be hard to do up against a handle like that if you're not the best with heat control. I have seen people spin that up, blow it out into a round ball, pop a hole, and then attach a handle, but it takes way longer. If you can figure out how to do it this way, you'll be making those 10 minute hitters. Next, we're gonna do the restriction. Little kiln dust on there, just make sure everything's nice and clean as you're working. So this restriction, I'm just gonna, again, use the super laser beam focused flame on the GTT, heat a very narrow section, and as it starts to move, I'm gonna let the tubing collapse as I spin it up, and it's gonna make a restriction in there. You're shooting for about three millimeters is like a standard bowl hole or a hitter hole. And then a little puff of air just to round it out. Sometimes they'll fold, they'll be a little oval, so. As I'm making this restriction, using the L Marver to kind of push that glass that didn't want to go in there, looking down the tube to see the hole and adding a little air to round that restriction hole out. And you can see I spent a lot of time looking down in there, making sure the size is good, making sure the hole is round. And next, I'm just going to open up the front of this so we can flare it out into the flared hitter bowl and I do this a couple different techniques in this video but here's one with the fitting infinity cutting wheel into a wiggle snap and that just opens up a little hole that you can't see because it's out of focus <laughs> but there is a tiny hole there that is gonna allow me to get my jacks in there and flare it up so next <clears throat> I'm in a nice big lynx flame here and the first move is to open that hole just to the diameter of the tubing you don't want to try to flare this all in one you want to make a nice even tube here so I'll have a nice even 12 7 ish hole and then once I have everything evened out I'm gonna heat the whole thing up and I'm gonna do the flare and like I talked about in the beginning, this flare is going to mimic the tip of those jacks. So you're going to get a nice little tapered flared bowl in there. And I'm going back and forth, back and forth on the roller pretty fast. A lot of wax on the jacks. You can see it smoking off there. It's a hot maneuver. You're going to need to dress your jacks with wax pretty regularly in this process. Next, we're going to be adding a clear magno dot. <clears throat> this magnifies the line tubing, which is cool, and also serves a double purpose as the hitter will not roll off the table and hit the ground and break. So I'm just adding a lot of heat into this 8mm clear rod. You want that thing dripping hot. 
smash it on there, and then I kind of just swirl on the amount of glass I need. And you know, if you can do this really fast and hot, it only takes a second. Again, I remember when I was starting, just adding a dot would take, you know, five minutes trying to hand torch it, trying to get enough glass on there. But once you get proficient with that smash, and then you can kind of swirl on the amount of glass you need, melt it in. Again, if you're struggling, right there, I just re-straighten everything out because I melted that in with the torch and not a hand torch. It can get a little off. So you just wanna go back to the roller, straighten it out. But that's the basic process. Heated up the claw grabbers. I'm gonna rip the mouthpiece off here. So I just remove the clear handle. And then I'm just gonna pick this hole open with a little six mil rod here. And I'm just wiping off that clear right back to the color. And you can see there I stretched it out a little bit, making it thin, stretch it out. And that one actually broke the hole open right there. <clears throat> the idea is to only get the glass you want to remove hot and stretch it so thin that it breaks open without making a mess. And there you can see we have the first finished hitter. I'm going to take that, pop it in the kiln. Here I'm using the mini jaws tool just to open up a 9.5 handle. I'm adding an ear plug so I have air pressure. Getting all the kiln dust off there. That's just a bunch of old printer paper stapled and taped together. Okay, you can see this one's a little off and it was off in the handle that was already on there. So I'm gonna heat that up and I'm gonna straighten that out first. And then that handle in my left hand is gonna follow. So you can see how I kind of heated up both ends there to get that one straight. But now we have a nice straight section. That straight section is gonna dictate into your bowl. That's why we use the roller on this process. Everything's gotta be super straight to go in and use the jacks to make the bowl. But if everything goes right, it gives you a really nice V-shaped bowl that burns flour nice and evenly down to the hole. There again, I'm just doing the spiral mouthpiece, a couple puffs of air to round it out. Take it down to the roller again and make sure everything looks nice and centered. And then on to the restriction. Yep, a lot of heat before that starts moving, but once it does, you can add the design, which is a spiral. And I usually go about one full rotation, so the pattern comes all the way around and matches back up. But however you wanna do it, they look cool. You know, it's a simple production product. There, I'm just using the Marver to kind of push that gather down into a restriction. And then we're gonna rip off the handle here and flare the bowl again. Oh, yeah, this one I cut open with the infinity wheel. Do a little wiggle snap. Yeah, and there you can see sometimes those cutting wheels leave little holes, so I'm gonna use just one of the blades on the jack to start opening that up to the 12.7-ish diameter I'm looking for to begin with. So there we have just the front opened up, so we have a nice place to start our flare from. And there I'm adding wax to the jacks and then I dripped off the extra into that little jack stand that I showed in the preview. 
And here I'm rolling really slow at first as to not send that thing off center and then fast at the end. And you get a nice little flared bowl that's out of focus again. <laughs> And then back to the Magno Dot. Got a little funny clear from the last Magno Dot, so I'm just gonna take a piece of six mil and clean that material off so that my eight mil for the Magno Dot has a nice clean seal to the hitter here. And then I'm gonna get it ripping hot and mash it on there and pull it back and then drag on the material I want to leave for the dot. And then, you know, you could use a hand torch. I used a hand torch to melt these in for a ton of years. It just takes a little longer. You know, this is faster, but the downside is you're getting that restriction hot and it can get your bowl flopping around and maybe be off center. But the cure for that is right here. Just take it back to the roller and make sure it's in line. So there we have the dot added, everything centered out. You can see the hole in there is nice and round. And then just heat up the claw grabbers. You never wanna grab hot glass with cold grabbers. They are probably heated from last time I used them, but it's just habit. Every time before I touch glass, I heat them up a little bit. And then same thing here, just removing the clear ever so gently. And you can see all my heat is focused in that clear and right where the heat base stops is right where the color starts. And if you pick it long enough, you're just gonna tear open a hole. I'm gonna just come in with the pencil reamer, make sure it's round, and then a little flatten on the, the marver there. Another touch with the pencil reamer. And then the last step is always a flash in the flame after a tool. Tools will leave chill marks and other things, so even if you tool something, you wanna throw it back in the flame for a second and just brush those tool marks off. Well, there was a good shot of the Magno Dot in action. You know, each one of these blanks is right around an ounce of tubing, so that's a good way to base your product's value off. So you know you have, you know, about five bucks. I think they're usually about 0.8 of an ounce, so it's about $5 in material in these hitters at full price. You know, if you're looking to get your material cost down, we do offer bulk discounts for production workers that want to use a lot of line tubing you know you spend a thousand bucks we'll give you 10 percent off you spend 2500 bucks we'll give you 20 percent off and that just allows you to get your costs down and you'll end up making a little more on the product if you sell it for the same price so if you can buy in bulk it's a good thing to put money back into your pocket In here, you know, I think I've used the same flame for all of these spiral mouthpieces. It's not quite the needle. It's like a mix of the needle and the links. A little puff to make sure it's round. That flame is really laser focused and allows you to build in that heat base right where you want it, not into the handle and not, not up the body of the hitter. So that's why I'm using that, that flame particularly there is it has a lot of thrust and it's very focused and it allows you to control where you're putting the heat very well. I would definitely say for these quick small production products, I'm going for the GTT over the Herbie just for that fact that I just talked about. They have a lot of thrust for pinpointing in specific spots, especially something this small. You have to be really deliberate with your heats. A 
looking down and make sure that hole is round. Checking the outside wall, marvering anything flat, puff of air that rounds out that hole. Again, you're shooting for about three mil in there for the hole size. And this one, I'm gonna pick and roll open on the front. You can see I'm just grabbing that clear with the six mil and pulling it to a thin spot. And I let it set up for a second there. And then, yeah, you can see where it kind of breaks there where it's like a force you're tearing it open. So now that I have my hole, pretty small hole, so I'm gonna blow a little air through it, try to open it up just a touch, and then I'm gonna take one blade from the jack, and you can see there I stuck it in and just spun it open. And then, I'm, yeah, again, I'm trying to take this to the 12-7 wall before I flare it out. So now that I have a nice, open hole needed a little love in the marver so yeah i'm getting it to that 12 7 tubular shape that i like before a flare and then from right there we can stick it in the roller and we can just use those jacks you can see it from the angle here how that the jacks are forming the shape of that bowl A little off on my shows this video everything's out of focus <laughs> but you get the point And we're just adding the last Magno Dot to the third hitter. Again, you get this ripping hot. Kiss it, pull it back, swirl it on. And then, you know, the idea here is to focus most of your heat into the top of that without getting the hitter and the restriction too hot because that will start flopping around. But like I said before, if you need to straighten it out, just drop it in the roller, just like this. So now we have a laser straight line work hitter. Again, preheating the metal tool just a bit, you know. And here, before you grab it, you gotta let it cool down. If you come in with that claw grabber while it's hot, it'll leave little dents. So timing is key there. You wanna come in as quick as you can after it's cooled just to you know be speedy and keep the pipe as hot you know hot as possible the speedier you work the you know the glass is gonna stay hot lo not longer but the glass is hot the quicker you work so you'll have less cracking issues if you can work fast there just tore open that hole pencil reamer rounded out a little flattening on the side of the marver another touch with the reamer and one last flash to get the tool marks off and that's the last hitter pretty cool little Halloween pattern If you got any names for this pattern, go ahead and drop them in the comments. We, you know, still a fresh pattern and we don't have a name for it. So we always like the feedback. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps you in your glass journey. Have a good day.